My swimming pool, it's got a layer of ice on it right now, but if there is a wildfire nearby, I take this ax and cut through that ice and set up my pump and hoses to protect my home from that wildfire. You might have seen my other video about how you can use a pump and the water in your pool to protect your house from wildfires. I got a lot of requests from my viewers for the parts list so they can make the exact same setup that I have, but it's not a one size fits all situation. So I'm going to go over how you can figure out what you need, save yourself some time, save yourself some money, and make sure you get something that's going to work for you. It's kind of cold out here. Let's get inside and go over this. To start, I want to say that I'm just a guy who doesn't want uh, my or anybody's home to be burned down by a wildfire if it can be avoided. And if you have a pool, that de definitely gives you a leg up. Um, I am not a f trained firefighter in any way, but uh, you gotta, you know, take that in consideration and realize that this stuff is dangerous and don't do anything crazy because you might be able to replace your home, but you can't replace your life. Now, another thing is, is that I'm not sponsored by anybody. So if I'm talking about any brands or anything, I'm not getting anything from them. It's just because um, I have used them or whatever, right? So um, just take that into consideration as well. Um, but I do wanna also say that there's a bunch of stories. You can look them up right now. Um, there was a story about a guy who saved um, his house and his neighbors on either side with a garden hose in the LA fires that are, um, you know, happening right now. There's a uh, woman in her 80s that saved her home from the fires with a, with a garden hose. And uh, what I'm talking about is a fairly significant step up from the garden hose situation. Go ahead and check out these stories and uh, look for yourself and decide whether or not this is something that's for you. And then again, always be safe, okay? I'm gonna start with an overview and uh, go over how you can figure out kind of what you need and the big picture. Then we're gonna get into pumps and how you can connect those pumps to the overview and to the hoses. Um, hoses, um, what you wanna think about with hoses, size, length, and stuff like that. Um, and then we're gonna get into the T's and the adapters. Um, so we're gonna go one at a time through these um, different sections so you can figure out exactly what you need. Go on Google Maps, get a drone, whatever. Get a overview of the property and the structures that you want to protect. And once you have that, and you have your idea of where your pool is, and you need to figure out how you can get water on all the directions of your different uh, structures, right? So um, this is my opinion. I've heard stories about people going up on the roof and so forth. I would avoid that. I would try to figure out how to get the water so I can stay on the ground. Once you kind of get a visualize on that, then you can take a long tape measure, if you don't have that, you don't want to get something like that, you can use some rope. Um, this is a 100 foot, but I'm going for 50 foot, so I'm just going to fold it in half. And then you got to get outside. Once you get a general idea of what you need, then get outside and actually measure. So here's my pool. I'm just going to put some stakes in the ground to... Uh, indicate some markers it doesn't have to be super precise okay so a hundred foot and half my 50 foot hose right here so if my pump is right there I'm gonna bring my line up that way I also want to be able to cover this side of the house and my greenhouse here so I just take my rope pretend it's a hose and here I am and this is where my first shot was. So that is now 50 foot. And it doesn't need to be taut. You come up the other side, and I want to get to the other side of these structures. Grab a stake, my hammer, run up here. And this is the other line coming off of that 50 foot, or off that T, I should say. Put a stake in. Like my ground is frozen right now. So I need kind of a 
heavy duty stake here, but you could use a popsicle stick if the ground's not frozen. Then, here's my next 50 foot length, right? If I have a T right here, I can pull out, pull out this way. This would be my nozzle and I can spray all of this. If that's a T, I come this way. To measure. Here would be my other T. My other hose would be over here. My other hose is over there. It's an easy way for you to figure out how many hoses you need because they're expensive. Now I have an idea of where I need my nozzles and where I need my T's. So I have a pump right here with a T on it and a T right here. And I have a line that goes from here to there and a line that goes over there and a line that goes over here and a line that goes over here and a line that goes over here and a line that goes over there. And I have a nozzle, a nozzle, and a nozzle, and a nozzle, right? And then I know I have my coverage of all these areas. I can spray all these different directions. So figure out where you need nozzles to be able to get water 360 degrees around your structures so you don't have to go up on your roof and try to try to work from up there. And then once you kind of figure that out, you just count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, 50 foot hoses. And I need one, two, three, four nozzles. And I need one, two, three T's. Now your setup might not look like that at all. It might look like this, in which case, you only need two hoses and uh, two nozzles and one T. Um, these things are expensive, so you save yourself a lot of money if you don't copy me and you do what you need. And uh, this nozzle here would be able to cover all of this. And this nozzle over here would be able to cover all this. You need to figure these things out for yourself because this is not a one-size-fits-all situation. You know, I like the idea of neighbors teaming up as well. You know, maybe your neighbor has a pool, you buy the pump, and he lets you use the pool. You know, um, it's a good time to be uh, helpful with each other. All right, so let's talk about pumps. Uh, my unit is a Predator 212cc gasoline engine uh, pump that comes from Harbor Freight. You know, it's fine, but before you uh, just go ahead and decide to get this, this specific one, um, realize that I was getting it for a couple of other reasons besides just my, my pool fire system. Um, I wanted it to be able to help smooth the ice on this pond that me and my daughter go ice skating on, and I also use it to fill the pool um, from a spring, which um, has silt in it. So. Um, the waste quality of this pump uh, works well for that. This is some footage from a uh, drill that we were running and a test. I wanted to see what it would be like with two of the nozzles going at the same time. And you can see that it is still moving plenty of water um, with two open. Now, I'm not going to say you shouldn't get this. I actually recommend it to my father. Um, I like it and all kinds of different reasons to get this. It's not very expensive. But if you're just going with a desire to make a uh, pump that you could use for your fire safety from your pool, I would actually consider the one inch version of this. It's going to be a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, uh, and you would also use smaller line. It would just save you uh, a little bit here and there. Now, you might think, well, one inch, I don't know. Well, one inch is, is a real fire hose, um, and there's some benefits to it. We'll get more into that in a minute. Now, the other thing is, is these are not designed 
for fire use at all. They're just pumps. So consider some of these other pumps that are kind of designed and advertised for fire. They come, they come with a cart. I made this cart, so um, you're not going to be able to find that anywhere online. Um, and they come with their intake line and they come with one hose and then you can add some teas because um, adding teas I think is really a critical quality to making this thing be very effective. So consider these options before you just get what I have. Here we go. The pump has been running this whole time and it, it, it's just under load. The water is not moving so I was putting, I turned the cameras off and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just gonna come over here, put the thermostat on it while it's nice and hot, so you can see. Turn it off so you can hear me. So you can see what temperature this is. Okay, so it is 80, 75, 75 degrees. It's nowhere near getting too hot, right? Okay, now let's talk about hoses. So as I was just uh, mentioning with the pump, maybe you wanna go with a one inch. If you go in with a one inch pump, you're gonna go with one inch hose. You're not gonna go up in size and hose. Now, you have a two inch pump, shouldn't you have a two inch hose? Well, two inch hose is really, really heavy. Um, you know, one and a half inch hose is, is a handful when it's filled with water because water is, is heavy. Um, so I personally do not want to have a two inch hose. Um, what, I would go with a one inch hose, but I, I'm running an inch and a half and I'm just fine with that. So um, consider, consider that when you're thinking about your hose. The ends, if you have all the same, and I use National Pipe Straight, um, hose ends, which is um, not the most common, but um, it what works well with the with the tees that I use. So I'll talk about that more in a second. But you can always make them longer by putting them together. If they're really long, they're kind of hard to roll out. So I I actually all like the um, the fifty footers, but. You know, that's personal preference. Now you have the quality of the single or double jacket. I run single jacket on these. And you know, when, basically what that is, is this, the durability of abrasion on the outside of the hose. So if you have a lot of like sharp rocks in your yard, you might want to consider going with the, the double jacket. But you know, you're not a fire department. You're not going to be deploying these things on a on a weekly basis and dragging them all over the place. This is um, kind of a, you know, a one once in a while type of situation. I actually use my hoses and you can see this one is all, all dirty, um, which is not the best, but um, you know, it's still, it's still fine. Um, I use my hoses to fill the pool as I was mentioning and there are rocks out there, but most of my area is all lawn so if I'm dragging the hose around, single, single jacket is just fine. Do not use these discharge hoses. You'll see some other people on YouTube and they're using them, they're calling them fire hoses. They're red, they like, might look like a fire hose, but they are a really thin wall and they're not designed to be under pressure. With choosing the MPSH, the National Pipe Straight Hose Thread, you do have to have some adapters when you go into a female PVC. It won't tighten down, it'll leak all over the place. So how do you get rid of that as you put this adapter in? With the adapter, you make the male end of a hose into a national pipe thread, NPT, which is tapered, and it will snug into that PVC and not leak all over the place. So my setup, I have three T's. This is a two inch that goes right to the pump. This side would go to the hose down by the greenhouse. There'd be a hose between these two. Then this one goes out to the front side of the studio. This is just a hose that are connecting these two. This goes to the back side of the studio and this goes to the front side of the house. And that gives me one 
two, three, four, five, six poses. Uh, your setup could be completely different. Now let's dig into one of these tees a little bit further is we have um, one side that is receiving a hose and that is a female inch and a half and then two sides that are putting the ends of hoses on. If you're gonna make your tee, you're just gonna use a schedule 40 uh, tee. You can make your pipe for your tee actually any length that you want it to be, but um, I just like mine to be nice and tight. So I don't have very much pipe in here. You can just see a little bit right there. And uh, how you do that is you, you figure out how much there is to that first step and then you mark it and then your other side and you mark it and that's your that's your length and PVC pipe cuts fairly easy with a bunch of different types of saws this is just a regular old wood carpenter style saw give it a little clean up then you're ready to go with your primer. Just read the directions on the can and then your cement. And then you would glue these things together. So then I would just need my other pieces off of that side. So I can give you um, some, of these, some of these parts, but I can't give you the exact number of them because again, it's gonna be particular to what you're doing. But always use Schedule 40, which is the, um, the kind of the durability rating of the PVC pipe. When you buy your nozzles, uh, make sure that they have the right thread that will match into your um, into your hoses. They have a gasket, so they just go right on, and they're hand tight. And I'm going to put a link to um, something that's pretty close to this. I got these things years ago, so um, don't know if it's exactly the same one. I know that they weren't as expensive as they are now. I know there's a lot of urgency out there right now because of how many homes have been lost in the LA fires. But if you have it, take a little time and design your system and set it up just the way that you need it for your needs. And then drill just like, um, you know, just like a fire department would do. Make sure all your adapters work and everything is working the way that you think it should. And also, don't forget about other strategies that you can use to protect your home from wildfires. I got some in this video right here. And if you missed it, check out the video right here about how this whole system works. Stay safe. Take care.